Hello, I am Jody Wolf, and you're watching Exposed December 21, 2019, and it's 8.54, Birmingham. Four days, guys, and Christmas will be here, and um, I think after this Christmas, there'll be one more, and I think we'll be out of here. Um, last blog, we were talking a little bit about could Nimrod be the Antichrist, and and it's highly likely, and I say that if anyone would have a say-so in it, look no further than the Pope. If they have DNA from Nimrod, it would be at the Pope's house, <laughs> hidden deep down, way underground among many other hidden secrets, like more books of Enoch. They've taken, I've seen only book one and two, and they say there's a three and a four, but they've taken them and they've, they've took one through 60 of book one of Enoch, and made it into two books, so 33 chapters and 33 chapters. And then they took book two and did basically the same thing. And some books are smaller than others, but they get to one and they are discussing technology that the fallen angels have given man. And this technology would be used from way back then to bring about Nimrod today. You had these angels that came down to the daughters of men, the watcher angels, 200. All of them aren't named. I think 20 are named, including the top two, Azazel and and another, I can't think of the name right off, but they traded, they taught, they taught the art of, of pulling metals out of the earth in each kind of metal, and they even taught blending metals, iron with another to make one and even taking tin and adding it to another metal to make it much stronger. And so you, you have your iron and steel and a lot of these things and and um, and they talk the art of makeup to women. And this is where if you follow that train of thought right on into Muhammad, he picks up on this and throws it in and says, Allah told him that women shouldn't wear makeup and kill them if they do. Well, this is where a lot of evil things come from what happened when the angels fell and came to the daughters of men. And, um, and they came down, by the way, and I was reading, and you had uh, Jacob's letter. I, I know you've heard of that. And I've always wondered, where was Jacob's letter? Where was that location where he saw that letter? Well, I believe it, it very possible Mount Hermon. And that would probably be the very same place that the fallen angels came down, Mount Hermon. This is uh, um, between Jerusalem and the Syrian border, highest point. And there's two places that's on the highest point, and, and very interesting place, by the way. Jesus went to the front door of hell's gate and prayed. 
right there on Mount Hermon. He carried two of his closest um, followers with him and went and met Elijah, and I believe it was Abraham, I'm not sure, Elijah, and um, had a conversation with God. And the place lit up as it was on fire. It was a white light. And that's happened three times. And uh, the third time was when the transfiguration, when Jesus went through the transfiguration and he was on Mount Hermon. Is a hell's gate telling them I'm in charge here. And, um, but where Jacob traveled that night, and during the night he decided to go ahead and sleep and took a rock and used a rock for a pillow and dreamed in told about the dream and uh, about the ladder coming down from a place. Well, where he had the dream, he was traveling from a small town. I'm going to say probably not more than 20 miles, maybe 30 at tops. And he was south of Jerusalem in the town he was going to, just say you take Atlanta, Georgia, and and you leave Atlanta coming to Birmingham, and you go one exit, three or four miles, and or even two or three miles, and get off at the high tower exit or something like that. But this is like He's traveled to a small Atlanta or Jerusalem in a small community or town on the edge of Jerusalem. So he wasn't near Mount Hermon. He was he was a long way from Mount Hermon. Wasn't so Mount Hermon he wasn't there when he fell asleep and he wasn't on the spot when he saw Jake on the ladder, but he talked about that. So Mount Hermon is probably what he saw in the vision. And, um, but also it talks about Mount Hermon. It's, it's popular because for some reason, it's, it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's not much over 9,000 feet. I may be wrong. I have to go back and look. Um, but it, it keeps snow on it year round. And there's enough snow to keep the Jordan River running year-round. And that's interesting because you don't see, and plus there's a lot of, uh, you know, ski resort, resorts up and down through there. But how that part of the world retains snow year-round on Mount Hermon when other places that are higher will not. And, uh, well, it's, it's a miracle. And again, it feeds the Jordan River, and, and the river never stops flowing. It gets down pretty low sometimes, but the water always runs. And, um, but that was a, that was a point made at that time, because this is also the same location that when Jesus went and prayed, this is when Satan showed him the world. And said, all this I'll give you. Plus, I'll give you some food, water. All this I'll give you if you worship me. And uh, you know what that got Satan. So that was probably where they were when that took place. And when Jesus was in Jerusalem, it's uh, Mount of Olives, 
seems to be have been a very popular place for him to visit every time he came there. And even though Lazarus, you know, the one that he brought back from the dead, from the grave, lived on the opposite side of the Mount of Olives. But Jesus always went to the eastern side of Mount of Olives. And it, it was just, and, and people talks about that, but yet they they talk about it as as asking a question. Why was it just there that he went? Well, maybe that was his favorite spot there that he went to. There's, there's a lot of things that could have happened. But anyway, I've gotten off my path a little bit here. But to find out more about who thinks and who wrote about Nimrod perhaps being used. Look, Tom Horn has, has talked a lot about this. And, and a CRISPR Cas9 talks a lot about the uses of CRISPR Cas9. And, you know, all the places around this planet, and there's one here in Birmingham, um, Southern Research Institute, that take DNA and still mix it with things, and people in Birmingham don't even know that. But I've known that since the 60s. And, um, but anyway, Jacob's Ladder, Nimrod, and the fact that the um, tyrant, well, I can't think of his name now, the leader of uh, Iraq, Saddam Hussein, has been rebuilding and it continues to today. They put hundreds of millions of dollars into rebuilding Babylon. And it's continuing right now. And they think that that's a really high possibility that this is where in the area where the next Antichrist or where the Antichrist may come from. I don't believe so. And I'll tell you why in a nutshell. Ezekiel 38, 39 war. When that occurs, this, and God says, this just, it throws God's fury up in his face. This is God's battle and he's going to beat them. He's going to destroy those. 87 Point three percent, if I'm not mistaken, will die in a matter of an hour or so when they attack Israel at the Ezekiel 38 war. That means, depending on how many people are in that war, how many people will they send? How many Muslims will be in that war? Well, you know that the Muslim world Muhammad said, Allah said, which is two wrongs, didn't make a right. And there was one that wasn't even there. So you have to kill the Jews and the Gentiles. They got to go. And then, and then we will rule the world. That's basically what they're saying. Depends on how many Muslim that are in that battle will factor in their future ability to wage war ever again because 83.7 or 87.3% of the people will die that night in that battle. Five out of six will die that night. After that war, we'll 
there be enough Muslim left, Islam backed or, or their religion, will there be enough of them left even to be able to wage war ever again? I don't think so. So I believe that Nimrod will not come if he comes to Nimrod. He won't come out of the new Babylon that's built in Iraq. He'll come out of a little tiny thing that's under the shop there in the Pope's house. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my thought there. Jody Wolf Exposed.